The starting point in science is observation. What you are seeing here is what happened to the North Tower of the World Trade Center, the second of three buildings to collapse on 9-11-2001. I use the word collapse, but words can be deceptive. What do you really see happening here? There's a tremendous amount of falling debris, but under the canopy of debris, do you see the rapid sequence of explosive ejections of material? Some of the jets have been clocked at over 100 miles per hour. I will call them explosions because it's hard to find other words that describe what we are seeing here. The explosions are not isolated and few. They are continuous and widespread. They move progressively down the faces of the building, keeping pace with the falling debris. Perhaps you can imagine a natural cause, but I can't. Notice that the explosions are occurring on multiple floors at once, over a wide zone, not in a floor-by-floor -floor sequence that might be explained by pancaking collapse. Notice there are explosions far below the point of collapse. Some are isolated and focused. These are often referred to as squibs and are commonly seen in controlled demolitions. However, this is not a standard controlled demolition. The building is being progressively destroyed from the top down by waves of explosions, creating a huge debris field. The destruction is in waves, not just in one wave. Most obvious is a rapid sequence of explosions near the visible corner of the building. But simultaneously we can see another wave of explosions much further down the face of the building under the canopy of falling debris. Notice that both waves of explosions progress down the face of the building nearly keeping pace with the falling debris just a few feet away. Slabs of concrete did not fall to the ground and smash to dust. There is almost no concrete in the rubble pile. Notice that the concrete is being forcefully ejected outward from the sides of the building already pulverized to dust. Notice that embedded in the dust clouds are huge girders and entire sections of steel framing that are being hurled out of the building. The horizontal speed of some of the girders has been clocked at over 70 miles per hour. Some of these girders impale themselves in the sides of neighboring buildings. Some landed as much as two football fields away from the base of the tower. What could hurl heavy girders with such force and give them such speed? Some people have suggested that the weight of the tower crushing down on the girders caused them to flex, and they sprung sideways by a spring action. But we are not seeing isolated jumping girders. We are seeing a major fraction of the mass of the building, steel, concrete, office furniture, and the remains of human beings, reduced to small pieces of rubble and fine dust, and being explosively ejected in all directions. Bone fragments are found on the roofs of adjacent buildings. The bones were not crushed in the falling mass, or they would have been trapped in the debris pile. They were pulverized along with everything else and blown out in all directions. The NIST investigators have claimed that the top section of the building above the plane impact point came down like a pile driver, crushing the undamaged lower section of the building all the way to the ground. The top section of the building is, however, noticeably absent. There is nothing above the ring of explosions except for a fountain of debris. Can you see a pile driver? It does not appear that the building is being crushed by anything. The waves of destruction and explosive ejections of material are occurring over a wide zone that continues all the way to the top of what remains of the building. The scientists at NIST did not model the collapse of the towers. Their analysis was gravely flawed in many ways, but the biggest flaw was that the scope of their investigation was artificially limited. They took their analysis only to the point of initiation of collapse, as though all that followed was inevitable and needed no explanation. The scope of their investigation was artificially limited to what might have happened or could have happened to begin the collapse. What they explicitly did not take into account is what actually happened. By limiting their investigation to the natural precursors of collapse, the plane damage and the fire, they ruled out from the start any possibility of discovering evidence of planned demolition. In other words, anything that occurred during the collapse itself, such as the evidence you are seeing here, was explicitly scripted out of the investigation. Any analytical model of the collapse, no matter how simple or how sophisticated, is a bad model and bad science if it does not come back full circle to explain the actual observations. What do you see?